How's it going guys and welcome to today's video. Before we get started, I just wanna say that first of all, it's really good to be back. Um, finally, kinda on my feet and able to do some stuff now. For those of you that don't know, I've been pretty sick for the last couple of weeks and uh, just kinda finally now coming back to life, so it's good. And thank everybody for all the kind comments and well wishes that you guys have been leaving me. That's been awesome. I'm actually really excited about today's video because today I'm putting into motion a plan or you might even call it an experiment that I've been wanting to try for a few years. And I'm also gonna to explain to you guys why I'm irrigating in February. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. The plan that I'm referring to has to do with last year's calf crop and how I can maximize my profit on them when I sell them. But before I tell you what I'm going to try to do now, I think first I want to tell you what I've done in the past. I remember growing up as a kid that my grandpa always used to sell the calves December 1st or that first week in December sometime. And you know, I never actually asked him why he decided to do it then, but I always kind of assumed that it was because he didn't want to store all that hay in the barn or buy enough hay to keep the calves through the winter. After I officially took over the herd, one of my main goals was to increase the average weight of the calves at the sale. And the easiest way that I could see to do that was to keep them a little bit longer. So rather than keeping them until the 1st of December, I thought, well, I'll keep them until the end of December and hopefully I'll be able to add a few pounds per head. As you can imagine, this was a pretty decent method and it worked fairly well and it kind of made me get to a point where I wanted to keep them a little bit longer, but I didn't for a few years because if I would have kept them into January the following year, then the ranch would show no income for that year and I wasn't really sure how that would affect my taxes. So for a long time, I didn't want to do that. So after a few years of keeping the calves till the end of December, Mother Nature kind of helped me get that little nudge in the direction that I needed. All of my hay got rained on and I just decided that rather than basically giving it away to somebody to feed to cows, I would just feed it to my own cows and try to add value to them that way. I talked with my accountant a little bit about this idea. They said they thought they could make it work. So that's what we did. So after making that change, now the normal thing that we've been doing for the last few years is keeping the calves into January. And usually by about mid-January, I'm getting low on hay and the weather's kind of unpredictable. So I'll end up selling them then. So in a nutshell, we would get to January and I would basically keep them as long as I could until I would run out of hay. And that sort of would vary every year. Now this year I've made it to February. Let's see, it's February 8th or 9th, I think, as I'm filming this. And as you can see, I still have my calves here. Yes, the hay in the barn is starting to get low, but there is something this year that's working in our favor. Of course, I'm talking about the weather, but more importantly, the grass. So because it looks like the weather is going to hold out and everything is going to cooperate, my plan is to let these calves out into this front pasture today, graze them there for a week, meanwhile irrigating the remaining pastures here in the ranch so that when they're done eating out here, we'll have an even better stand of grass here in the middle field. As we fly over the front field, you can see from bale grazing how much winter forages we actually uh, inadvertently planted out here and now we're reaping the benefits of that because in February when really none of the summer grasses are growing we've got a lot of feed out here for these calves. As soon as we get these calves turned out here into this front pasture I'm going to be starting the water here in the middle field. Now after they get done out here in the front after I'm thinking it's seven days or so we should have an even better sand waiting for them here in the middle field. Now you can see that we did practice some bale grazing out here, not as much as the front field, but definitely a little bit. And I'm thinking that with a little shot of water, what's growing here already is really going to jump. I irrigated the backfield here last night and the water is just about ready to be shut off out here. The calves won't make it into this pasture for at least two weeks. We'll see how they graze down these other two fields. 
but when they do what I'm hoping is that I've got enough feed stocked out here to keep them back here for two or maybe even three weeks with minimal hay supplement. So if everything goes according to plan, I will have at least a month of grazing for these calves. So that way I can add weight to them at a cost effective way for me. And I can sort of hold on to a little bit more of my hay reserves because we still don't know what springtime is gonna do. The weather is nice now, but I've seen this happen before and we had rain all through April. So I figured that while the weather is nice and the grass reserves are here, I might as well take advantage of them. So that is the plan for now. Uh, of course, things are gonna change. We'll make adjustments as we go. And the other thing that I need to keep in mind is that you know these cows are gonna start having calves in about a month. So I'm gonna need to get them out on grass before too long too. What I'm hoping is that after the calves get done here, I can get water on this immediately. And then after a week, put the cows back out there and just kind of get them all in a rotation um, I'm not really sure quite how that's going to work yet, but we'll definitely figure it out as we go. Before I turn these calves out on the grass, there's one thing that I need to do. Now, while I've got them out here, I still want to give them access to hay because like I said, the whole point here is to put pounds. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> the whole point is to put pounds on the calves. So I want to make sure that they are eating as much as they can possibly handle. So what I think I will end up doing, well, you're pretty friendly, aren't you? what I think I'm going to end up doing is opening this gate here and setting up a couple of panels. I'm not sure if this is going to make it in the shot, but I'll set up a couple panels so they can walk through this gateway, through the mud here, and then out this gate to get into the front field. Let me go grab some panels and let's make this happen. I got my little makeshift alleyway done here so I think we're all ready to turn these calves loose. Now I'm sure as soon as they start kind of funneling through here and out into the pasture these cows are going to get insanely jealous because they're going to wish that they were running out there but um, I don't know you're probably going to see them kind of pace and run up and down the fence line but they'll get over it before too long so well without uh, further ado let's open these gates up. Well, that's a pretty sight in my book. I think the calves are a lot happier out there and kind of like I predicted, the cows are not so happy. But after, uh, after a few minutes, everybody should settle down and kind of get comfortable with where they're at. In a week, I'll bring you guys back out here and we'll see how much of this pasture they've eaten, kind of talk about how much hay they consumed while they're on the pasture, and we'll get them moved into this next field and do it all over again. Until then, thanks for hanging out at the ranch with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.